Welcome everybody once again to a safe place podcast today we're going to talk about stress stress management and actually how to use stress to overcome some of the difficulties that we face in life so when we use the word stress we need to really understand what type of stress is that we're looking at there's one which is distress and used stress distress is unwanted it usually causes a sense of pain suffering it's uncomfortable and it's not wanted you stress on the other hand is something that's deemed to be positive by us and we use it to transform us and move us forward it is stress that is used and perceived to be wanted useful and even meaningful it can feel exciting and give us a sense of pleasure you stress commonly occurs when we're facing some sort of challenge and it's a challenge that is wanted by ourselves you stressed occurs when we feel adequate for the task we feel confident and we feel enough we feel a sense of uh, competency and a sense of value in what we're doing and therefore we become positively stimulated by that challenge and distress usually occurs when we feel overwhelmed by the task and that's usually surrounded by thoughts and feelings of not being adequate not being good enough to fulfill that task you stress is necessary for personal growth it comes from a sense of adequacy and we walk into stressful situations feeling a sense of purpose i.e if i can feel this stress and use this stress not let this stress overwhelm me i can fulfill my sense of purpose distress on the other hand is detrimental to our health and sense of well-being if we're walking into situations where we don't want to face that stress we are literally restricting and resisting that sensation within our bodies and that sensation can be quite crippling it can be damaging to our emotional self and it can definitely play with our sense of uh, competency inadequacy which instill us with really negative emotions and the more those emotions feel negative within us the more we the less adequate that we feel so what causes people to either have you stress or distress because we're all very different so you stressed if we feel that we're fulfilling a purpose if we feel that we have meaning and purpose in what we're doing and by doing that naturally will come a state of stress or pressure that sense of purpose instills that stress to be something more pleasurable something that we are happily venturing towards and turning towards to achieve our purpose so let's imagine now that uh, you walk through life with a sense of perfection that you have to be perfect in every single way and with that comes a lot of energy that has to be used by the body and mind and as a result of feeling that sense of i need to be perfect we're putting ourselves into a very distressful environment within our own sense of well-being we're feeling the difficult and crippling effects of stress it's a lot to take on board a lot of pressure to feel that you have to be perfect that you have to not make any mistakes that you not have to face any failures and that lack of understanding that reality is full of failures and that we need to walk towards the failures with an open heart of understanding that it's okay to fail can release some of that burden some of that stress that we're feeling ultimately distress is what thoughts and feelings do i have around and within myself when i become stressed do i turn stressed into distress i.e do i have thoughts and feelings that tell me i'm not good enough that i'm a failure that i'm weak this feeling of stress and pressure means that i'm not enough to complete the task or do i change thoughts and feelings around where i begin to see that stress is a normal part of everyday life and that if i have a sense of meaning and purpose in my life then i can walk towards stress feel the stress in a sense within myself but know that me feeling it is actually the growth that i'm looking for because ultimately what we're looking for is growth a great uh 
counsellor, psychotherapist, psychologist in the 1960s and 70s called Carl Rogers said that if you put potatoes in the dark, they will begin to root. And those roots will definitely find a way towards the light. They will begin to grow outwards and move towards the light. So it seems that within every organism, there's a sense of wanting to grow. There's a sense of wanting to move towards where the light is. Now, actually, if your perception that you're not good enough creates a sense of distress within your body, that growth isn't happening. And as a result of that growth not happening, you're not happening. And as a result of you not happening comes a deep, deep down distress inside the body, which feeds itself. It accumulates within the self, creating you to have a more sense of restriction, a more sense of failure within you. When ultimately, what is your meaning and purpose in life? It's to grow, it's to expand, it's to connect, it's to feel a sense of companionship and unity with the world around you. And that through that growth naturally is going to come a lot of stress everything that grows goes through some sort of growing pain and that pain can be deceived that pain can be perceived as stress it's felt as stress so are the situations that occur to you in your life stressful or is it your mind your perceptions and interpretations of that and their lack of truthful interpretations and perceptions of those situations that create more distress within your body. In other words, stress doesn't exist in the situation. Stress exists within how we perceive that situation to be, how we perceive ourselves to be as a result of that situation. Are we unconsciously, some of us, wired to fail because we feel a sense of failure from failing and that failure restricts us from the growth that we're looking for do we want to hurt do we want to feel pain does hurting and feeling pain feel like home did we grow up in environments where pain and struggle is what was normal and therefore even though pain and hurt and suffering is uncomfortable for us all, we're unconsciously choosing to actively find it to feel like ourselves. So when we go back to that person that needs to live up to perfection, do everything perfectly, but they don't have a sense of meaning or purpose within that. Let's look at a brain surgeon, for instance, somebody that has the meaning and purpose to be perfect. And the purpose and meaning comes from that perfection is the idea that they save people's lives. Does that sense of stress and pressure fuel them to move forwards, fuel them to move into that discomfort, to achieve those goals? Because at the end of it, there's a sense of connection, value, worth. I've saved somebody's life. Can't you instill that sense of value and purpose in your life now? That I need to walk towards what I've deemed to be wrong, which is de-stress, because it's uncomfortable. And use it to grow within me a sense of value and a sense of purpose and meaning in my life where I'm not actually trying to save anybody I'm actually trying to save myself I'm actually trying to grow and by growing I'm choosing to feel stress and therefore it becomes less de-stressful I am now using stress for me I'm allowing it into my body I'm not resisting it I'm not moving away from it. I am moving directly towards it because growing is painful. Stress is uncomfortable. So therefore, I will now use it for me. My purpose and meaning in life is for me to grow. One person may be taking an exam the next day and they are so overwhelmed with the distress of what that exam and the perception of failing that exam means that there's a sense of complete disease within the body. There's a feeling of nausea, anxiety, and actually maybe even being sick with the distress that they're feeling as a result of perceiving that they're a failure and that they will fail. And the consequences to failing that test cements a deep rooted inner belief that you're not enough and that you're a failure. Another person therefore may love taking tests 
they love the uh, the stress that they feel with doing so. Why? Because they're perceiving the test differently from the person that's perceiving the, the test that creates a sense of distress. They probably have a set of beliefs within them that they are good enough and that failure is a normal part of growing. So even if they fail the test, they know that they'll work that little bit harder and eventually that test will be completed and passed. There's not that sense of perfection, perfectionism within them and they allow themselves the space to feel the stress more wholly, more gently and therefore don't feel as distressed. So used stress, using stress is not always going to be comfortable. But it is most definitely more comfortable than de-stress. To a person that uses stress, they feel that sense of discomfort with a sense of growth that they're achieving and are on a process to accomplishing something. Therefore, the feeling of stress is something that they feel a connection with and something that they sense that they want to have within them. Somebody with de-stress is quite the opposite. They do not want to feel it. They actually hope that they can avoid it and therefore they don't grow. And as a result of not growing, they feel even more distressed because the soul wants growth. The soul wants to venture out. So ultimately, let's see it like this. Instead of resisting stress, because you've learnt somewhere in your life that being in a stressful situation meant failure, and hopefully you can learn through this video now that failure is a normal part of life, that now you want to walk towards what's stressful, because you see in that stress is growth. You see in that stress is actually what you've always been looking for, which is a sense of well-being a sense of peace you will never find peace and well-being or resisting stress by turning away from what is stressful it's quite the opposite you have to feel the discomfort with the right mind which then feeds the emotions with more comfort to be able to replace old negative cycles of behavior if you grew up in a family where you wasn't allowed to express yourself, you wasn't allowed to be honest with the way that you felt. And when I mean you wasn't allowed to, that these parents that were like our gods in a sense, that our sense of whole well-being came from how they interacted with us. If we feel that we couldn't speak up, we couldn't be ourselves, we couldn't express our emotions without the anxiety of how a parent rejected those feelings, of course we're going to feel stress. And we're going to avoid feeling that stress because when we did feel the stress of how we felt and we expressed it to the parent, it was denied or rejected. So we learned to avoid the feeling of stress. But that is just a story. It was a set of experiences that have created a belief inside of you that you can't feel stress. You can't be who you are. And we need to change that now with new behaviours new ways of seeing the world, new ways of understanding yourself and more ways of being able to walk towards what has been uncomfortable, to learn new lessons different from the ones that we learnt as young, vulnerable children. So what stress do you naturally feel? Do you use stress or do you distress? Whatever the answer is to that question, ultimately it comes down to one thing our past, our relationships, how they've affected us. But that's just a story about our past now. You have to parent yourself. You have to fill your mind with truthful, understanding thoughts, a sense of compassion for yourself, a sense of warmth and gentleness. And when you walk towards stress and you instill within you those perspectives and those understandings, you can transform de-stress into using stress. Thank you everybody for tuning in.